Tonight, students at Webster University are protesting cuts and a pay raise for the school's president and chancellor. I think it's really important to amplify student voices on campus because we're the customers, basically. Like, we kind of make this university what it is. Regardless of, you know, what you're doing and where you are and what facilities you use, um, what buildings you frequent, I think students making their voice heard and making the people on campus, whether it be, you know, faculty, adjuncts, um, people working in the dining services, making everyone known in the area that something needs to change and students need better. That is the most important thing that I think students can do for themselves on campus and it's very important. Initially, I, um, I read the stories by the St. Louis Post-Dispatch about, you know, Beth Strobel's income and how high these numbers were going. And I was looking around at my uh, surroundings in the, the Loretta Hilton Center and, um, you know, the rehearsal spaces um, as a fine arts student myself. And I said, if that's where the money is going, why is my education like this? Why, why do my facilities look like this? Um, and where, where could that money be going that would better the students' lives instead of putting it into the pockets of Best Rebel and Julian Schuster and those people who are giving themselves raises and not focusing on the betterment of their school. Whenever that newspaper article came out, everybody pretty much put together that this was the central thing that was creating all these other problems that every department was having. Pretty rapidly, everybody was sharing it on social media, and, um, and that kind of organically grew into the Webster Student Coalition, just Webster students coalescing and, um, and protesting against the administration and what they've been doing and demanding uh, transparency and reform. On September 19th, we had a student gathering to protest administrative issues at the university, specifically about salaries that some people were earning. They had a good turnout, around 200 people that either were there for the whole time or came by and stayed for a bit. What happened is it began to go down a lot of different avenues. So they, they didn't only speak about administrative salaries, they also spoke about things they're working on right now, like doing an assessment of accessibility for campus that is ongoing right now as an outcome of that demonstration and a lot of other things. So, so overall, it was a beautiful day out weather-wise and um, they did a good job planning it. At the student-led protest, uh, I was covering it on our Instagram. I was live streaming it. The entire journal staff was there that day taking pictures, interviewing people. It was really important to hear kind of how many people were like struggling with paying their tuition, just struggling in general at Webster. It was really illuminating for me. It made me feel like less alone. I think all of journalism is just about getting the smaller voices out there. We needed to cover this one because us writing on these things the day that they happened was necessary and if we weren't the ones to compile all the facts, I don't know who would have. Shortly after the demonstration, um, the Student Government Association organized um, a kind of a town hall kind of um, forum uh, where anybody could come and talk about and follow up uh, about some of the issues that were raised at the protests back in, in, on the 19th. The Student Government Informational Forum on October 3rd was created based off of me being able to hear all these different concerns that were brought up by students. And so I wanted to create a space that students were able to hear from the staff side on what's happening. We had staff colleagues that represented a number of different areas where we had heard during the demonstration that were concerns for students. So for example, we had people there from housing, we had people there from uh, public safety, we had people there from the Title IX office, we had people that were there from the Multicultural Center, um, International Student Services. So, so we had a, about 25 different colleagues of mine came and spent time talking with students. I think it's incredibly important to have that communication open between the students and the staff. If there isn't clear communication, you're going to end up with problems. So we were able to kind of have a common ground and see where we currently stood and then what progress we needed to make in the future. One of the biggest issues that we got out of that, that demonstration that day was accessibility. So we were working with a consultant to come out and do a campus study about how students that have different documented disabilities um, are challenged when they navigate campus. Elizabeth Strobel is stepping down. Strobel joined the university as president in 2009. The Board of Trustees has began a global search for Strobel's successor. Dr. Strobel announced that she's going to uh, be moving on, stepping down from her chancellor role at the end of December. Somehow it got passed along to Beth Strobel that we were writing all of these stories. So she actually reached out to me. The first interview I had with her was, I believe, in September, right after the protests. It was really impactful to kind of look at her as a person and say, 
she's doing her best here just like everyone else. And then she actually offered me a second one which was later in October. And then she announced that she would be stepping down for this sabbatical. And then we had to quickly pivot and think about how are we going to write this article about her stepping down. Once, you know, the information came out about Beth Strobel, um, you know, the sabbatical and, and no confidence vote, everything kind of just went away. I do not think the administration did a very good job at um, addressing the concerns brought up by students this fall. Um, it's currently December and everything has kind of been swept under the rug. A lot of the other topics that were brought up that day, kind of the ADA accessibility concerns, the tuition concerns, kind of more the practical or like on the ground issues. Just from where I'm sitting, I have not seen any substantial change. When we talk about where the university is going and where it should go, that conversation has to be nonstop because every year something shifts, every year something changes, every year someone is gone and someone new comes up. And th if the conversation doesn't continue when all those changes and shifts are going on, then we become stuck. We, be we become rudderless as a ship and we can't get where we need to go. So that, the kind of conversations we have um, daily are nonstop and if, they're, if, if we don't commit to that kind of dialogue, then we don't get to purport to be who we are as, a, as an institution. It's a crazy time for students and within the spring semester we're going to have to have a new set of values, a new character to kind of be put in front of us and I know that I think we'll be supported. I know that people have heard our concerns and I think that if they go under the radar again the students will speak up as they did last time.